This particular product is not brand new, but all the accessories should be in here anyway. At least I know what is supposed to be in here, and I'll tell you if anything is missing. Here we go. Two SATA cables. Easy front panel cable connections. This is a very nice accessory indeed. MSI's EasyCon cable that allows connecting RGB as well as fans. USB drive, three M.2 fittings as well as the key for them. A collection of stickers. A regulatory notice. And one thing that I see missing is the quick start guide. And in this little box here, let's see if it's still here and in good shape. Yeah. This is a Wi Fi antenna. Oh, <laughs> I knew that something is gonna be wrong. Check this out. This is an Asus uh, Wi Fi antenna. So, yeah, this is not the original antenna. The original antenna looks just like the one I have here. So nothing has changed. This is an antenna from uh, B650 motherboard. The X870 uses the same one because uh, check it out. It's right here. That's the antenna that is supposed to be included with this motherboard. Let's move on to the best part and unravel the motherboard itself. There it is, beautiful, all black, matte black PCB on both sides, yeah, pre-installed I.O. shield, nice. Let's start with the back panel I.O. Here we have flash BIOS button, clear CMOS button, HDMI, Two Thunderbolt connections, that is up to 40 gigabit per second speed. And one USB-C 10 gigabit. Two 10 gigabit USB-A's. Three 5 gigabit USB-A's. And four USB 2.0. There's also a 5 gigabit per second LAN connection and Wi-Fi 7. In terms of audio connections, we have optical, mic in and line out. My favorite feature on this motherboard is this easy release button for the top PCIe slot that makes removing <laughs> the graphics card so much easier. And check it out, there's even a little symbol there in the window that indicates if the PCIe slot is locked or unlocked. Conveniences do not end there, because we have some screwless mounting mechanisms for the M.2 SSDs. The bottom heatsink is screwless, and the top one as well. You just press that to unlock it. Furthermore, the top SSD slot has a double-sided cooling. Check it out. There is a heat plate there with a thermal pad. To gain access to other SSD slots, we still have to unscrew some screws over here. Let's do that. There we go. This heatsink has thermal pads as well, as per usual. There's a total of four M.2 SSDs. The top two are Gen 5 and the bottom two are Gen 4. Another new feature on the X870 Tomahawk is the 8-pin power connector at the bottom here. It delivers up to 252 watts of power to the GPU as well as fans and RGB. If I'm not mistaken, the GPU can suck up to 150 watts of power through the PCIe now. This is a beautiful board. Check it out. Large heat sinks on the VRMs. Nice. By the way, Power delivery system is 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases. And they are sufficiently cooled. Just have a look at that top heatsink. 
beefy. And this one as well. Very nice. Check it. The board still features the same AM5 socket, which is backwards compatible with the Ryzen 7000 series. Let's open this up, have a look. There we go. There is the socket. And the CPU is powered via the two 8-pin connectors over here, at the top left. It's a shame that MSI didn't move these connectors to the right, just above DDR5 slots, as they did with the new Z890 motherboards. But it is what it is, maybe next time. This board features just one PCIe 5.0, 16 lanes at the top here. It is also reinforced with steel, nice. This one is PCIe 3.0, just one single lane. And the bottom one is PCIe 4.0 that features just four lanes. Let's see what other connections we have here for SATA connectors, as well as the USB for the front panel. This is a 20 gigabit per second connection that also supports 27 watts power delivery. We also get two USB 3.0 connections for the front panel. In total, there are eight fan connectors. One here, two more here, one, two, three, four, five in the top right corner. This one is CPU fan and this one is for the pump. In terms of RGB connections, we get one regular RGB and one, two, three ARGB connections. A couple of more USB connections here. This board supports DDR5 up to 8400 plus memory speed. And this is a nice touch. We get regular debug LEDs as well as this digital one that will actually provide us with a code that <laughs> we can look up and actually see exactly what the problem is. Overall, I think this is a nice motherboard and uh, this is not just some regular unboxing. This motherboard will actually go into my main PC system that will feature the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. I will showcase this new PC on my main channel. A link will be in the description below if you're interested. That's where I do all the hardware tests. Check it out. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this motherboard. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to reward my work with a like. That helps out a lot. And subscribe for more if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.